There was no shooting and all that. You might get stabbed. You know, that would be your worst scenario. But, you know, we, we get into some humbug, right? And, and so let me pray first before I get into my message. Father, I thank you for a spirit of wisdom, revelation, and the knowledge of your holy word. Open the eyes of our understanding that we may know what is the hope of your calling. What's the exceeding greatness of your power to us who believe? We'll be careful to give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor. Hide me behind the pulpit so only you can be seen. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. And all the citizens say amen. 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 Who can tell me the title of last week's message? Christ. Yes. Come on, get your fire. Yeah. 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 Praise God. Listen to this. Strike first. I'm going to give you six things, six D's that I want you to Pay attention to if you're going to defeat the enemy. Six things that the devil, well, five things the devil uses to try to trip us and get us off course. The number six thing is determination. That's the thing that you're going to need to overcome the other five. But as I thought about growing up, you know, they had bullies. You know, we got kids not being bullied, right? But they had bullies back then. They just didn't call them bullies. And, and, and bullies would always prey on the weaker person. You know, they, whether they were smaller or you could tell they were intimidated or they were a little timid, they would always pick them and take their lunch. And, you know, the bully would come and take your lunch. And if he take the dude next to your lunch, he's coming for your lunch next. I'm just going to tell you. Because that's how he operates. He, he intimidates everybody. And so, you know, you're all right as long as you ain't taking my lunch. I'm good. I'm good with you. <laughs> but you don't know he's coming for your lunch next. So I, I had a real problem with that. And, and, and so, you know how you get that nervous energy? Yep. When I saw the guy take advantage of the guy next to me, I knew I was next. So I, I didn't wait for him to come get my lunch. I went to get his lunch. He thought I was crazy. You gonna jack the jacker? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Cause I know you're coming for mine next. So I say, strike first. Don't wait till the devil strike you. You strike him first. How do you strike him in the spirit? By being prayerful, being persistent. And doing what you're called to do. Amen. See, see, we, we, we haven't been born to just raise a family, have a nice house, drive a nice car, and, 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 and not do anything for God. Right. We came here with purpose. Yeah. And so you've got to colonize earth with heaven's culture. You've got to learn how to bring God in everything you do. See, our problem is we don't know how to separate having fun from serving God. Because we think serving God is boring. Not the God I serve. But, but let me say this to you. Five things the devil wants to use to distract you. Five things he wants to use. And I'm, let me say this. If you're sick, then go pray for some sick people. Yeah, yeah. If you're sick and the devil's attacking your health, go find some sick people. And go to pray for them. Because whatever you make happen for somebody else, God will make happen for you. That's right. That's right. See, the devil wants to distract you with what you're struggling with so you get stuck. That's right. Yeah, See, if I'm sick, then I sure ain't going to pray for nobody else. I'm still dealing with trying to pray for myself. No, you need to go pray for yes, somebody yes, else. Yes, yes. Take your eyes off your problem and put it on your God. That's right. Come on. Whatever the struggle is. So, so the first thing I want to say, the first D, because my wife always tells me, you know, you start with the D's and you never give us all the D's. And I said, no. <laughs> so I'm going to make sure I give you all of them. The first one is distraction. Okay. The enemy will always use something to distract you. Right. He'll find something that, that you're interested in that will take you out of your place. That's it. That's it. See, see, sometimes we find 
events and stuff like that more important than worship. Or oh, oh, we'll go to a party quicker than we'll go to a worship service. That's true. We'll, we'll, we'll party before we go praise. If I had a choice to praise a, a party, I'm going to the party. Oh, that's the truth anyway. Hey, man, I know you ain't gonna like to say hey, amen or owe me. But that's the truth. Distraction, number one. He, the enemy will always find something to distract you. Mm -hmm. Now listen, we, when Katrina hit, we evacuated. We was in Houston. I was fired up before I left. But on the way to Houston, there was a lot of things that happened that distracted me. Uh -huh. I was distracted. I was out of my house. I, I was living from place to place. I, I just didn't have it all together like I was used to. I was distracted. And the enemy knew it. And so I had to figure out a way to get back home to repair my home. Mm -hmm. and, and so we started coming to New Orleans to, to do some gutting out and cleaning out some homes. And while I was in New Orleans, my family in Houston was fighting every day. My son Jonathan, they didn't like him because he was New Orleans. And, and he was representing New Orleans. So he's grabbing every day. And it got so bad till it looked like every time I got to New Orleans, the humbug started in Houston. And my wife told us, she said, look, Devin is, they try to jump, Jonathan and Devin jumped in, and then I had to jump in. I said, oh, Lord, have mercy, what the world going on? I got to get back to Houston. <laughs> and let me tell you something, I was distracted. So what happened was, I started thinking like I used to think. You hear what I'm saying? I got so distracted till I lost my focus. And I started saying, oh, no, I'm going back to you. We're going to deal with this. Now, see, that's my old mindset. See, I forgot God was my provider and my protector. I forgot to go to the courts of heaven on the behalf of my family. I said, I'm going to handle it myself. I became a God to myself. Because the devil knows how to get us distracted. You could be in church every Sunday and still be distracted. And you think everybody don't know that you're distracted, but it, you got a big old light on your head, see? <laughs> distracted. It's obvious. So the enemy had me distracted. I'm running back and forth. I'm trying to keep my family safe, I'm trying to get my house fixed, all at the same time. The next thing came was delay. Everything was delayed. I had insurance, I couldn't prove it. We living in a hotel room. All of us, after we moved from the Four Seasons, we went to the Marriott and we stayed in the hotel room, they gave us a hotel room, so we always in one room. You put five, six people in one room. Wow. Oh, it's gonna get frustrating. Oh, yeah. But everything was on delay. I couldn't get through the phone. I, everything I tried to call, I couldn't get nothing done. I'm like, no, oh, what is going on? But see, I got distracted. Mm -hmm. Took me out of my place. So now I'm leaning to my own understanding. The Bible said, all your ways acknowledge him. I was losing focus on who I really was. Everything was on delay. But God was still working behind the scenes. But I couldn't see any evidence of it. Some of y'all are in delay now. Well, you're wondering, where are you, God? in this situation, and God says, I'm working behind the scenes. But stay focused. See, I got distracted, and so I started thinking I was the provider. I thought I was the protector. I, so I had to step into a whole nother mentality. But what I didn't know was, 
The devil had a foothold in my life, but he wanted a stronghold. See, I gave him a foothold, but he was looking for a stronghold. He, he was looking to get in and to shut the whole family down. He said, Lord, have mercy. So it went from being delayed to being discouraged. I'm like, Lord, have mercy. What in the world is going on? You know, when you get discouraged, you get frustrated, you get irritated. It don't take much to become irritable. I mean, everybody was snapping at each other. I, 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 I said, Lord, that person in one room. Tension. Tension. And I'm saying, Lord, wait, what's going on? I'm running back and forth. New Orleans, Houston. New Orleans, Houston. Look, when I get back to Houston, I'm ready to throw it out. Everything is at peace. When I get back to New Orleans, they fight again. I said, boy, I'm just getting the bad news to my, they're fighting us. Oh, Lord, call Mr. Foster. Lord, I'm crazy. We had messed some friends out there. I said, man, call somebody. Goodness gracious. I said, you know what? We got to do something. I said, I got to go back to Houston. I, I'm just going to have to believe God for this house, but I, I got to get back to my family. So I'm telling you, fight for your family. But make sure you stay focused. Amen. See, I got discouraged and then I had to go to God and say, God, what is really going on? He said, you got off your post. You got off your post. You should have been in Houston, colonizing Houston with heaven's culture. But you start looking at everything that was going on and you got distracted. Then you got delayed. Now you're discouraged. He said, what you need to do is strike first. I said, okay, I got it. I told my wife, I said, y'all been fighting in this apartment too many days. Everybody in the apartment knew us as the New Orleans fighters. He was up buddy, bro. Jonathan was cut up. I said to myself, Jonathan, Jonathan was traumatized. I can tell you the truth. He was traumatized. He's and he's still traumatized to this day because of some of that. He, I'm telling you, he could, he could go off at the drop of a hat. And see, I didn't see some of the stuff Devin and saw. He said, Jonathan, man, I'm telling you, Jonathan just went completely berserk. I said, no, that mercy, that's what trauma would do. I said, you know what? I told my wife, I said, baby, we got to get back on our boots. We're going to start a Bible study. In the support of complex. And that's what we did. And listen, we started a Bible study in that apartment complex and we started filling our house with people who needed God. God said, You back where you're supposed to be now. Now I'm going to start moving some things around to accommodate you. See, too many of us, we so busy with our own little life. You want God to move on your life? Then move in his place. Get in your place. Stop making a living and make a difference. It wasn't until we started making a difference in other people's lives that God started making a difference in ours. As soon as we got back on our posts and started doing what we were called to do, God started doing what he was supposed to do. Start talking to people. All of a sudden, all of the lines of communication was open. I said, Lord, no, look at here. Called my attorney to find out, asking questions. He told me what to do. I called the lady. Next thing I know, the lady was working for us. All state wouldn't give us anything, but the lady said, Don't worry about it, Mr. Baptiste. I'm going to get you everything you need and some. I said, Wow. Look at God. But it wasn't until we got in our place. See, as long as we was out there doing what everybody else is doing, that's what your problem. A lot of y'all problem is you too busy doing what you want to do. And ain't doing what God called you to do. When you start getting concerned about other people, God gets concerned about you. 
But if you want to be your own provider, you go right in. You can't provide like him, though. I said, he is our El Shaddai, our all-sufficient God. That's why I said, if you're struggling with sickness, go, go pray some book, empty the hospital out. I'm just telling you how to do it. You forget you were sick. Start seeing other people get healed. What you make happen for somebody else, God will make happen for you. Praise God. Number four, distort. Yeah, it's when you get a twisted view of something. See, see, the enemy would like to bring distort in your life because what he wants to do is he wants you to start looking at your problem instead of looking at your answer. He, he, he gets us to focus on, see, our, our, our insight becomes we look at the doors that are closing and not even be able to see the doors God's opening. Because when some doors are closing, God is opening other doors. But the enemy distorts us. And so we start magnifying what's really going on, what we can see. When we ought to be walking by what we can't see. Because what we see is temporal and something to change. But what we can't see is eternal. And God has an eternal purpose for your life. And he's wanting to bless you. You're waiting on God. God's waiting on you. Yes. 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 You said, God, when? He said, I don't know. When? <laughs> when when you going to commit to me? When you going to commit your ways to me? When you going to stop straddling the fence? When you going to stop hitting and missing? When you going to stop perpetrating? Say that, God. When you going to stop being Say. a hypocrite? Say. Oh. Why you keep... Saying one thing and doing something else. Hey, that's long. When? That's, long. that's his question. When? My head is not too sharp to deliver. My ears are not too heavy to hear. I want to move in your life. I want to take you places you can't even imagine. But since you want to do it your way, I'll wait. I'm patient. I'll wait until you're ready. Number five. Doubt. Doubt. I say it like this. If you doubt, do it out. Let me tell you. Don't think I didn't have my doubts. Oh, you have your questions? And, and guess what? God will answer your questions. God is not afraid of your questions, but he wants you to bring your doubt before his altar and lay it on the altar, next God, to give you revelation. The Bible says, whosoever shall say to this mountain, be removed, and not doubt in his heart, not in his head, he'll have whatever he says. So it's okay to doubt. Just bring your doubt before God. Lay them on the altar. But I promise you this, if you doubt, you're going to do it out. Only believe, and you'll see God move. It wasn't until we moved into Bible study and started ministering to people that all the doors started opening. I had a young lady who worked for Allstate started working for us. She would tell my wife, call me later tonight. And then she would navigate us through the process. She said, if I offer you this, don't take it. Hallelujah. But look what she, if I offer you this, I said, huh? <laughs> she said, don't take it. I'm like, what? <laughs> don't take it. <laughs> My God. They offered me a hundred dollars. She said, don't take it. She said, oh My God. <laughs> My knee got weak. I said, Lord. He said, don't take it. <laughs> I told the lady, I said, listen, they told us that we had no coverage. So now I want them to pay to the uttermost farthing. 
She said, that's exactly what I'm going to help you get done. She said, let me tell you why. Because everybody on St. Charles has already been paid. And none of them had any water. You had all kinds of water. And you can't get a quarter. But God had me in this office. Hallelujah. I said, but God. Look, that would have never happened if I'd have stayed off course. I'm telling you that because if you don't get back on course, you ain't going to see your breakthrough. It's going to come when you get back in your place, when you cry towards your life. When put God first in everything. I said, thank you, Jesus. He said, how long you bought that house? I think we bought the house in 2001. Yeah. When did Katrina hit? God said, I'm going to pay that house off. Five years. Most of us got 30 year mortgages. Some of us got 45 year mortgages. Five years. Praise God. The lady said, Listen, they're going to offer you one fall. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Do you know this lady worked for all state? She worked for the insurance company who's insuring me. And she's telling me, don't take it. Baby, honey. Lord have mercy. Boy. Huh? I tell the Holy Ghost dance. I never dance like that. Don't take it. Yeah. Finally, she got to 160. She said, take it. No, 180. Or something like this. She said, take it. I told the people, let me pray on you. <laughs> <laughs> what they didn't know, I had an inside scoop. <laughs> Paid the house off before I even came back home. And then the people sent the check back. Sent the check back. I said, oh, excuse me. I said, no. I sent the payment to pay off the house. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Baptiste, we understand that. Uh, but we know one thing. If, if you paid off, you're not going to be able to fix it. So we wanted you to make sure you know what you're doing. I said, listen, I know what I'm doing. Make sure you know what you're doing. Take that check, pay that note off, and send me my title. Amen. That ain't your business how I fix it up. If I live in a house with no walls, right. it's mine. Right. That's right. <laughs> they was worried about the 25 years of interest. <laughs> a house that, listen, you buy a house for 100000 by the time you pay it off, it's a million. They know what they're doing. Compound interest. The Bible calls it usury, an unjust gain. Paid the house off. See, I'm gonna buy my wife a brand new car. I never had a brand new car in my life. I always went to the thrifty store. I said, I'm going to get one off the showroom floor. I want them Mercedes Benz. I told the dude, I, I want that one right there. Who you worried for? Don't worry about that. My God, I got a daddy who's wealthy. <laughs> he, uh, he took it. My wife was at, at a job. We had got back to New Orleans. I went in, drove it out the showroom floor, went straight to a job with him. Pulled up and told the girl, I said, tell my wife, come out for a minute. I want to see something. She said, oh no, we can't do this. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I said, this is your vehicle right here. Yeah. I said, this is for all the struggles that we're in. Yeah. 